I'm Mike Bradner, and this is Capital Views, and we're here with Mike Chenault, who's Speaker of the House, and he has a 40-member House to run, and Mike, I think sometimes it's like trying to herd stray cats. Well, it, 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 it is, you know, but it's, uh, it's actually very rewarding when you can see that you can get things done and that you can, uh, you know, help folks get uh, some of the uh, legislation accomplished that they think is going to make a difference to their, to their members and to their communities. Mike, we face a, you know, an uncertain future. We're not quite sure what's going to happen. We have declining uh, pipeline uh, throughput. Uh, we face LNG markets that are in flux. Uh, how do you see the future and what, what do we need to do to prepare on the physical side and also on the development side? Well, and, and you know, it's complicated because uh, oil and gas issues are always complicated, but I think that last year we made part of that move and that was SB 21 and that was taking care of uh, an oil tax. While, while <clears throat> uh, production is continuing to decline, uh, you know, we've got to figure out a way to arrest that problem and, and incentivize more uh, investment in Alaska. If we don't do that, we'll continue that decline. It'll just get steeper and steeper, and pretty soon there won't be money for uh, uh, the operation of the state government. On the gas side, I think that, uh, you know, I think the governor is, uh, put in a couple pieces of legislation, uh, the legislature is going to look at those and determine is that the best way to move forward with Alaska's gas to Alaskans first and, and uh, onto an LNG market. Uh, people may not like an LNG market, but you've got, to have, you've got to have an end user in order to, one, pay for the uh, long-term costs of a 45 to $65 billion project uh, where the citizens of Alaska are not paying for it. Uh, out of their heating bills. We're just getting into to a, a, an issue now that focuses sort of like on what's happening in the market, you know, and that was a major piece of attention in the Aegea pipeline of, of why was this suddenly becoming feasible, what w the market was like. So it's like we're just getting there now. Yeah. Well, the original market for Aegea was, was the Midwest. And uh, when shale gas was not only discovered, but uh, they figured out a way to crack that nut. That, that market went away. And so then you start looking at other markets and the only other market out there is the Asian LNG. And uh, you know, I think that we're at a point now where we're in good shape to maybe capitalize on that if we can put together a tax structure and a project structure that, uh, that one makes sense, two uh, provides uh, uh, equity and, uh, and allows us to move forward. And of course, we, we don't want to export our gas at a, a neutral take. I mean, we want... We want to profit. Yeah, and the industry profit. does too. There's no sure difference in our goals uh, in that respect. I mean, they're in the same basket we no, are. They, they, they want to make money for their investors, and, and the state of Alaska should want to make money for our investors, which are the citizens. And this, you know, our investors, if they want their permanent fund, <laughs> we're, we're going to have to... <laughs> To, uh, well, the permanent, you know, the permanent fund is there, and I think it'll continue on. I, I have, I uh, have all, you know, high hopes of that. Uh, I don't see us making any changes there, but, but if we continue the decline that we have, and the price of barrel of oil drops, we could see the state government really drastically change on what the citizens have have uh, uh, become accustomed to. And, and isn't that the danger now? I mean, oil prices. You know, have moderated somewhat, but and we we're going to need to pull mon money from our reserves. But there's always the, the concern out there that you will run into a significant oil drop for a while, and that that is not anything we control. Well, I think that if people look back at history, uh, when uh, Governor Murkowski came into <clears throat> office, we were spending at a deficit, not quite what uh, they're projecting now. But then also then we didn't have the money in the bank that we currently do. Uh, so I think that what we need to do is try to stretch our reserves until we get, uh, uh, get a structure in place, either more oil production plus uh, 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 gas to help us get through, uh, you know, to help move Alaska forward. Now stretching those reserves mm -hmm. has something to do with, too, if you have discoveries, mm -hmm. being able to have time to bring them online. Sure. I mean, it takes. I don't know how many years, but well, on the average, I think it's about seven years here versus uh, some other place like North Dakota 
you can drill a well today and, and within a, just a short period of time uh, have that uh, oil or gas, whatever you find, you can have it to market. That's a big difference you know, and whenever you're looking at long-term investment. We have to move a rig out of the, an ice pad mm -hmm. and we're lucky if we drill two wells. Sure. Well, you've got to build a nice road to it, you've got to move the rig out, you've got to do your drilling, you've got to pull the rig back before the ice melts, and then you're sitting there looking at uh, uh, what all information you've gleaned from the wells that you drilled for the next year until you can go build another ice road. Well, in North Dakota, they just hook up to the rig and they move it four miles and they drill again or directionally drill. Sure. It's, it's, uh, well, if you're if you're if you're an oil company and you're looking for oil and you're looking for investment and rate of return, that's the things. That's some of the things that they look at. Up here, you have to have a big find in order to make those dollars work out. But our oil production generally per well is higher than mm -hmm. than I others. So. Yeah. The, uh, I know North Dakota; it's they're very low production wells, but they drill lots of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's uh, they've gone from three thousand to nine thousand or yeah. something. Well. That's, that's the system that works for them. Uh, you know, we have shale gas here also, we could use that, but try to permit two or three hundred wells for a year. Mike, we're tough. out of time. Um, we've been talking to Mike Chenault, the Speaker of the House, and this is Capital Views, and I'm Mike Bradner.